Hello everyone, um, thanks for joining me at stampityourself.com. My name is Connie Ray and today's tutorial is this cute little card. Isn't it cute? I love it. I love it. Okay, I have used in this little tutorial that you can do very easily now that I've done all the hard fussy bits. Um, in this tutorial um, I have used um, the Pretty Kitty stamp set from Stamp It Yourself. Yes, yeah, stamp it. <laughs> stamp yourself. Stamping. Stamp it. Stamping up. There. Let's get it out. Okay, from stamping up. And this is the kitty set that I have used to do the little kitten. I have used the bottom kitty here because I wanted the little kitten at the bottom. This little guy. I wanted he, her to face the puppy dog. So I wanted her facing that direction. So I have used the kitty out of the pretty kitty stamp set. I have used uh, Bella and Friends, which is this one, and I have used this little puppy dog here. And I have used the Sentiment, I'll be your up when you're feeling down, which is in this set as well. And I've also used the little birdie. And that's from Bella and Friends. The umbrella has been used out of this particular set. Oops, sorry, the light's just shining just there. Um, weather together this is a bundle set it comes with a polymer stamp set and the dies to match i have used the die for the umbrella i have used the die for the umbrella stick and i've used the rain dies and there's two of those and this creates the rain effect on your um, project per se and i'll show you how i've done that i'll just put some paper behind it so you can see it and it creates rain and that's what the dyes do, as well as making the little umbrella that um, they are sitting in. So, and floating on water, and I'll show you how to do the water as well. So, um, I hope you enjoy this tutorial, and I um, appreciate you stopping by to give it a go. So, that's what you need. The weather together, the, um, the Pretty Kitty and the Bella and Friends. Um, the stamp sets and the dies for the umbrella and uh, the weather together and they come as a tutorial but anyway that's the three sets that I've actually used today and I've also used I have to say the die this particular die sorry I forgot to mention this one this particular die out of the flourishing framelets I think it's called yes no the flourishing flourishing phrases um they come as a bundle and i have that set as well and the bundle comes with a, with um some dies and those dies they're in, included in those dies is this particular die here which i have used to make the waves and i'll show you how i've done that um very shortly but that is basically uh, created i've used this die to create waves and of course you know if you want to draw the waves or rip rip paper and rip the waves you know like you can do that too you don't need to buy that die set to do that you can make your own waves but i it actually came about because i did have some um there's a couple of designs that i did and it did actually leave this little um edge here on um let me see if i can bring it up closer more accentuated here we go um so when you cut this particular die it actually i'll show you what it does so if you pop this into your um your die machine let me bring you in closer so you can see exactly what i'm doing there we go okay so if you pop this into your into your big shot what happens is you run it through and you're left with two sides on either side that come out once this comes away this is what comes away is this gorgeous little um Mm, that's not very good you can't see because it's still filled in i've got hundreds of these mind you <laughs> Three hundred thousand takes later here's a nice colored one so basically when you take the die out you'll take that away and what you're left with is this which is this gorgeous wave kind of look and i liked it because it was very accentuated the waves themselves i thought oh they've got little waves and hence this project came about so um, I didn't throw them out and I've reused them as waves. So again, you can use this die to create it because you're going to have them left over if you used it anyway, or you can just make your own waves. It's easy. Okay, so I used the rain um, dies, which are these dies here. There's two of them in the set. 
and I've used both of these in this particular um, tutorial. Just make sure, and I've done it a hundred times myself, um, get your rain when it falls, make sure it's falling the right way. You don't have one falling one way and one the other. So make sure your bobbles at the end are really quite extent, are the, are the heavier end. I've had my rain in so many different angles. <laughs> so those are your two dies that come in the, in the um, tutorial, uh, sorry, in the um, the bundles kit. So and that's what I've used to create the rain. So I've already gone ahead and oh, I've already gone ahead and done some things so that you're not going to be sitting here doing a lot of fussy cutting and bits and pieces. So to save time, I've already gone ahead and done a lot of stuff so that I can show you exactly what to do online uh, in this tutorial. So you don't have to fuss around too much. Well, you don't have to sit here and watch me for hours. Okay, behind here, I actually had used some cardstock which was marina mist and it's about oh, let me see it's uh two inches wide is it two inches no sorry it's two inches in length and it's four inches in width so you just got to make sure basically it's the same width as your card because this is going on the back and you can always trim down the side so it doesn't really matter but you must make sure it's going to be the width of your card and this mat is three and three quarters in um in width and in length it's five so you want to make sure that you know it's at least three and three quarters so on the back i'm going to quickly just add my i've run out of uh my marina mist card stop i had one piece left which i used on another card in the original design so i've found something that's very similar but i do prefer the marina mist it does look a little bit better so you don't want to get this, go around the rain, don't go on the rain and don't go on top of your um, Marina Mist card because you'll have it showing through and you don't want to do that. So I'm just popping that on and I've used Tombow just to make sure it's nice and stuck down so that the rain is very accentuated and as you can see it looks like rain, isn't it cute? And it does come up good. Now I've used, um, I've tried one having three sets of rain. Doesn't work for me. I don't know. Um, I've tried two. It seems to work better for me with two. But if you can get three into the card and it doesn't, and it suits you and it doesn't look really busy, go ahead and do it. But I just found it. Um, there's a lot going on with this card, so you want to make sure that um, you're not overdoing the card, and um, it's not too hard to look at. It's not too busy to look at. So. That's my thoughts on that section. So I'm just going to trim this off now just to make sure it's nice and neat. And we've got our, our rain all set in, as they say. So the rain is in. Now the next thing that you um, probably would be looking at doing would be, I suppose, you could um, do your little critters. I've done my cat, my little kitty, and my little puppy. I've already gone ahead and done those, as I said before. I have used my Copic markers, Copic markers, Copic markers, whatever people want to call them. I use W1 and W3. I use W3 on the puppy and W1 on the kitty. And, of course, some pink around it, their little bows and the little um, dog tag. Um... I like Copic, but I'm, I I just prefer to use Copic as markers um, because they're alcohol markers and they work really well. They are a bit pricey. You can use colouring in pencils really if you want to, it's up to you. Or you can use ink and you can watercolour it. You can use lots of different options here. But for me, I prefer to use my Copic markers. Number one, because I already have them. And number two, I just think they just work really well. Um, but obviously stampin' up, don't use Copic markers. Their markers, um, the ones that they've got are fine, but they tend to, if you're using a lot of shading, you'll probably um, need to have the um, stronger card stock to make sure that your shading comes out as nice and as clean as it does with the alcohol markers. So that being said, we'll move right along. So I've already done the kitty and the puppy in those colours, but you can do them whatever colours you want. You know, and kids can do them if they want to. They can colour them in in pencils. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to start doing is the waves. Now, and I did, as I showed, showed you before, just with the leftovers from using this dye, I've got waves. So I liked the dramatic effect of the waves. I started with um, 
just use this line here. I hope my head's not in the way, not. And I hope I'm close enough for you to see. Let me just move in a bit further. There we go. So basically, the card, obviously, the, the waves are longer than the card. So, and I want them to be like that, and I will trim them off once I've done it. Uh, once I've sorted out my pattern of the waves and all I've done with the waves is I've just gotten them on the bottom there we go I'll just move out a bit so you can see what I'm doing it is a little bit of fiddling around this card but it is so much fun to get it done and then once you get it done the the effects are really cute super super cute so here I've just used a little bit of Tombow on the bottom because I would do want a little bit of wiggle room. I want to be able to slide it around to make sure it's straight and I've got the effect of the waves and all that sort of stuff. So I'm going to probably pop this one about halfway or three quarters of the way up from the bottom. Okay, so that's my first layer, I think. To try not to stick it onto the um thing. <laughs> oh dear, I have tried. I've done this card a few times today, and I've also start, done the recording a few times today. So, um, mm, no comment. <laughs> but I did think it was certainly worth it to go to all the fuss. All right, so this one here, mm, I'm thinking, yeah, that's kind of good. I like to. I like the dramatic look that it gives you with the waves. It gives a little bit of um interest rather than just having coloured waves it sort of like looks a little bit more dramatic so it kind of goes without saying doesn't it that you want to just give it a little bit of movement as well when you are making it so when you're putting it together it's look like, it looks like there's movement in the waves it's just what you want and then I'm thinking that I might just use this piece here because I might just make a little bit more depth in, it, in the waves and if it looks good I might take it out that way. Shall I take it out that way? Take it in this way a bit. Yeah. And about there, I think. I don't want it to marry up too much. Mm -hmm. There we go, about there, I'd say. Actually, I might use this piece here. Yeah, after you've done a couple, you sort of get this into the swing of it, but it does take a bit of practice, I have to say. Yeah, this one looks good. Just on the bottom, we're gluing just little oops sorry i'm out of shot there let me bring that up closer just along the edge here just putting a tiny tiny piece of uh, a sprit of glue tombow and then we're popping it down again just going to make a little bit of drama on the waves just so they look a little bit dramatic got a bit of depth to them Yep, that looks good. Don't worry about the edges because we're going to just trim that off and it's going to have this gorgeous um, wave effect on the bottom. And another one. I think we've got one more. I th think there was only four on the original one, but I did decide at some point that um, we could do with some a little bit another wave or two just to give it that um, oceany effect or the wave effect. So I think I'm sort of getting there with that. I might just pull this one over to this side of it and make sure that it's there and it's got the depth. It's not hard, but you just need to play around with it a bit. And then last but not least, I might just put another little piece down here. And I might put it up a little bit closer this time, just to give it that nice wave look, the dramatic wave look. Yep, I'll stick that one down. Okay, so then just put this one in here. So if you want your your waves to be tighter looking, you put them really close. If you want them to be exaggerated, just separate them basically. But ultimately, the waves are oh, waves. I guess a bit of um, scrap paper, which is good. Okay, so now we're just going to trim that off. Mm. Don't trim off the card. <laughs> don't trim off the card. I don't want to have to do it all again. There we go. Okay, as you can see, there's some waves. Isn't that cute? Okay, so now we've got some waves laid down on our 
this is getting a bit sticky. Don't want my card to stick. Um, let me see. I'm just thinking if I need to put another another one just on the bottom there because it just looks a little bit bare and crooked. So I might just straighten that bottom piece up because it just is look. It's just looking a little bit neglected down the bottom here. So I might just put another one just on the bottom, just to even it up a bit. Because it's looking a little bit sad on the bottom. It wasn't quite looking straight and it wasn't looking, there we go. Perfect. So we've got big waves and little waves, got all sorts of things happening. But either way, you need the waves to create the drama. Okay, so there's our waves. I probably could have gone a bit closer here and you can also move yours up here, but you know, it's okay. It'll all come out. At the end of the day, it all says the same thing. It's a very cute little card. Okay, so the waves are done and out of the way. The next thing that we want to do is... Uh, I'll tell you um, what I've used in terms of colours. So the rain, which is this piece up here, you're going to need a piece of marina mist in a cardstock. At the um, you've got the damper demon den denim. Um, that is, do, 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 do. I think it's two inches by three. I'm not sure. Um, let me think. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Yeah, two and a half inches by four and a quarter. So you want to make sure that the width is covered the width. It doesn't really matter what size these are in terms of their, uh, their depth, but the width of the card is actually four and, let me see, let me get that right, three and three quarters. So you've got to make sure that your waves are longer than three inches. So I've done it four inches across and two inches deep. Um, and that's in Bermuda Bay and Damper Denim in colours. This is uh, Whisper White Thick Cardstock and you need a piece of black cardstock as well for the umbrella and also for the backing of the card. Okay so I've got my little birdie and I've got my... all right okay so for the umbrella I have used my white. Um, this is a pigment ink white uh, pencil pen if you've got one. Um, I don't know what to do if you haven't, <laughs> but this accentuates the actual umbrella. So, you, you know, if you haven't got one of these, you probably would. I tried to do the umbrella without it. It just doesn't look the same. So it is nice to actually have it. So, and I'll show you, all I've done is the little white dots across there, just to give it that accentuation of the fact that it's a, an umbrella. You probably can't see up close, but the definition in the umbrella, when you do the white dots, it does actually bring the umbrella alive. That's my little stick. And you do want to have it looking really good. And the black umbrella just makes the colour pop as well, and all the other colours. There you go, and on the top of the umbrella on the handle, I have done a little couple of little strokes to accentuate the umbrella again on the handle. Just a big one across here and a little one, and we will be chopping a little bit of this off because it's going to be too long, so you don't need that whole length of it. Okay, and then we've got Kitty and Puppy and Birdie. <laughs> They're so cute. It is a cute little card. Okay, we've got a, what I'm just waiting for that pigment ink to dry. In the meantime, I shall get out my um, sentiment. And I used the washi label punch to do the sentiment. I know the washi label punch isn't available anymore. So seriously, you can just get a piece of paper and cut the little banners, something like that, easy. But I did the washi label. 
because it, I just had it there and it's just easier for me to do with the washi label. So um, you can do yours whichever way you want, obviously. I'll just let that dry off a bit. It doesn't take long to dry that one, but pigment ink does take a couple minutes. Okay, so the basic grey, I have done my sentiment. Bit of stamping as they say a little bit of stamping and the other thing is if you don't want to do the wash label I would actually suggest that you could stick it straight onto there um, with all the ongoings it's not really going to matter because it's got dimension on it anyway so if you wanted to just stick it straight onto there you could if you haven't got a label punch but I'm going to use the washi label punch for this um, and this particular sentiment and I'm just going to bring it over as far as I can and I'll show you why in a second okay I've as you'll see I've got the sentiment and I've actually put the washi label right over to this side because I want to put my little birdie on the corner here so I've done my little birdie and again I've used um, my Copic markers to do my little birdie so I'm just going to pop little bird on there with a little bit of glue Bit of Tombow and just so he is whoop, poor little birdie and drop him okay there we go so he'll sit there um, I'm not quite sure where he'll go at the moment I had him over here before and he's covering up a raindrop. So what I might do is just leave the sentiment there. The next thing we want to do is pop the umbrella into the waves. Now, when I pop this in, I'm not going to put glue on it just yet, but I'm just going to find my placement. Let me just see if I can bring you in a little bit closer. Okay, so I'm going to find my placement for my umbrella so that it slides under the waves and it looks like it's actually floating, as you can see. Look at that. <laughs> so it was worth putting in that extra one wasn't it so we'll just pop that there and I'm sort of thinking that kitty well I like to be able to see a little bit of kitty and a little bit of doggy their bodies because you, they look instead of sitting on top of the umbrella it looks like they're sitting in so basically you want to get their angle well placed so I'm going to stick them on first and then I'm going to go back and pop the umbrella in again I'm thinking that I don't know if I can get it into this one. Might be able to. Hmm. I tell you what, we'll try both and see how we go. But first of all, I'll get my placement for my kitty. So I'm just going to put a little, my animals. I'm just going to put a little bit of Tombow just on the bottom here, so that it grabs on my umbrella. Sorry, I keep going out of camera because there's a lot of fiddly bits to do here. But of course, you've got to cut You've got to cut this all up. It's called fussy cutting, and you do have to cut it all up um, because there isn't any dyes with this particular um, the animal set. So, but you know, like you just do a whole stack at night time while you're watching TV or something like that. Now, see how I've placed my kitty. You'll see that kitty is placed like she's actually sitting in the umbrella and not on the umbrella and it's just that placement that's really important and it does look silly if you've got her sitting on top of it because she's not sitting on it she's sitting in it and so is, so is Bella it's funny my dog's name I've got a dog called Bella I think everybody's got a dog called Bella haven't they <laughs> I, think, I don't know uh, Bella and um, kitty cats we've all got Bellas and kitty cats Okay, so I glued that on the wrong side because I wasn't concentrating, but that's okay. I can glue it on this side now. So I'm just going to put little Bella into her little spot. And again, I want her to be sitting in it and not on it. So I want to be able to have, you need to have a little bit of glue so that you can have that movability. Because she's got to look like she's actually going for a ride rather than being taken for a ride if that makes sense okay there we go so okay you right there Bella okay I'm thinking they look okay <laughs> I think they look really cute okay so 
we've got them in position now so again we'll go back to looking at where you're going to pop the placement like there's a few options in terms of placement where you can put the umbrella I'm kind of thinking hmm let me see I just want you to be able to see what I'm talking about. There we go. It's up pretty close. So I've got it stuck into the wave. If you look here at the waves, you can pop it into the waves. And I can pop it into the um, first set of waves. Or I can pop it into the second set of waves. I'm not quite sure. I'm going to have to turn this around. Sorry, guys. I've got to be able to see what I'm doing. I can't work backwards. <laughs> okay. There we go. What do you reckon? The waves, be yeah, that one looks better because they've got the waves behind. Yep, that looks good. I like that. And I'm going to tip it on a little bit of an angle, just a little bit of an angle, so it looks like they're floating by. There we go. There we go. Look at that. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. There they are, floating off into the wilderness. Okay, so. Okay. All right. So with these guys, what I did is I just put a dimensional on the back of their heads basically just to give them some lift just for the animals alone the rest of it was done with some um, glue okay all right so we go back to popping them in here I think because we could see what was going on with the little crews <laughs> little things they don't look like they're on much of a cruise I can assure you there we go okay so there you go look at them floating by in the distance poor little bears all right now we've got the umbrella and again as I said we need to cut the umbrella to make sure it looks real that kind of looks a little bit too long for me so I'm just going to nip up a bit off the edge probably about there run a bit of Tombow on it or glue whatever it is that you want to use is your preference of adhering things I use what works <laughs> that's it okay so I'm just going to turn this around so I can see what I'm doing because I want to make sure that I get my umbrella stick in proportion with the umbrella there we go and I've just stuck that straight down oh, there you go how cute is that? It's so cute. Look at that. That's adorable, really. I'm going to give this to my niece, actually, because I actually bought the puppy set for her. But when I saw them, I thought, oh, no, I can't not play with these. They're just too cute. Okay, and then the last bit is the obviously the, um, the sentiment with the little birdie on it. And I'm kind of thinking about here for that. Or is that a little bit? There we go. So, oh, maybe over here. Let's have a look. Mm. 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 Yeah, that looks good. All right, and I might pop that up on some dimensionals just to give it a bit of height. It's such a fun card. There's a lot of preparation work, guys, and I am sorry that this is such a long video, um, but there is a lot of preparation work in this one. You do have to do your colouring in. You do have to do your cutting out. And, of course, because I'm demonstrating this one, I've had to do a few of each of that. So it does take um, its toll. <laughs> but um, it certainly is a lot of fun when it all works out. Just trying to find the placement for this one again. I think I just need yeah, just there. That looks good to me. Sorry, I keep going out of camera. I've been very bad with my camera skills tonight. Very bad. Somebody's going to have to fire me. There you go. Now, when I cut everything out, which I didn't do on this and I should have, but when um, I cut everything out, what I do is I go around the edges. You can go around the edges of each item that you've cut in black or you can go around in, I use the W1, uh, for the, the Copic markers and you just go around the edges of it and it just gives um, a little bit of colour to everything just around the edges of your um, design or whatever it is that you've put together and it just covers up all the white if there is any white because you are doing a lot of cutting so you want to make sure there's no white sticking out of your design you want it to be fairly clean you don't want it to be not 
you know, having little bits of white because it doesn't look very nice, especially if you've gone to so much trouble to create such a gorgeous card. Okay, so the next thing and the last thing that we have done is that I have um, I've used white cardstock with a black background. I'll just bring that out now. Um, yes, I've used white cardstock with a black background because I just think that it looks good and it makes the colour pop a little bit more. And every time I look at them, I think, oh, there's a little kitty. I can't believe they're so cute. I just want to rescue them. Okay, so um, did I stick? No, I stuck this directly onto the black. I didn't use any dimensionals on this because I don't want any dimension on it. There's already enough dimension on the front of the card, so I didn't really want it sticking up. But this, the black one I did, and I'll show you exactly how I've done that. So it's not, I mean, it's not rocket science. It's pretty straightforward. So I've just basically stuck this one with some Tombow glue or whatever it is you use to glue. The key is to get it straight, I think. It's just more the um, the issue here. So lining up your cardstock and your design onto your black back mat. There we go. Just give it a bit of it. And as you can see, it does give it that gorgeous real picture photographic kind of look, doesn't it? looks cute um so obviously this is my cardstock um this is um my normal cardstock which is 11 by four and a quarter so it's whoops, sorry in landscape it's 11 by four and a quarter and my black mat is five and a quarter by four and then the white mat is five by three and three quarters so I'll just pop this onto here now oh I haven't gone it's not too bad considering I was, I was just looking at the time it took me to film it second time <laughs> I hate having to do it second time because that means you've got to do everything second time and who's got space for that um, just put a bit of dimension on this one in the back um, yeah, this is, as I said, it is a fussy card. It is one of those cards that you do as a one-off, but you also do it because it's just so cute. And you can get the kids doing some of these too for their classmates for birthday cards and things like that. So you don't sort of like hold back. It will be, and you'll always, they're always really cute. So I think it's kind of like a set that you'll always use. And um, it doesn't matter. You've always got a cat lover or a dog lover around. And they always can relate to pictures of their chosen pet, whether it be dog or cat. So I don't think you can go too wrong with them. They're just absolutely cute. Okay, that looks like it's going to be as middle as I can get it. Okay, I think we have finished. <gasps> Thank you so much for joining me. I do apologise for rambling on and um, for all the little bits and pieces of mishaps. But this was, for me, a little bit of a challenge, as you can imagine. Um, but now you've seen it done, you know that it's not that difficult to do. The hardest part of the card is actually the part that I've already done, which is number one, is the, always the design. That's always the hardest part. The next part is just sitting down and cutting out all your little creatures um, or all your characters, whether they be flowers or pets or whatever it is that you like. I like flowers and pets for me when it comes to stamping. Flowers and pets are the go. Um so I do hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. Thanks for stopping by. Um, any questions, please drop me a line. You can purchase any of these products by hitting the link up the top of the YouTube bar where it goes to stamp it yourself. You can go in. You don't have to join. You can just go in and buy the products um, if you choose to, cardstock, anything. Just purchase it and off you go. And I'd love to see some of your ideas and some of your takes on it. Thank you very much for joining me and I hope to be back really soon with another fun tutorial that somebody in your family is going to love. Thanks for joining me. Bye for now.